So Kevin McCarthy was down on the southern border yesterday, and uh, he and a number of other Republican members of Congress uh, were just eager to get in front of the cameras. I saw a couple of them on CNN yesterday, and uh, and talk about how you know the uh, ICE officials down here are telling us that there's terrorists. Uh, some person named Sri Lanka is sending them in. Yes. And uh, it's like, and we've got a crisis here. It's, it's, it's terrible. It's terrible. Now, when Joe Biden became elected, I'm talking about back in November, when the election was declared for Joe Biden, the few Republicans who actually acknowledged that he was going to be the president immediately started attacking him. And one of their main attacks, given that, you know, basically all the Republicans have these days to sell is racism and grievance, was that uh, Biden is going to let brown people from south of the border come to America and, uh, you know, uh, uh, break into your house, uh, rape your daughters and steal your jobs. Right. This, I mean, this, this is this is how Trump kicked off his election campaign in 2016. It was the meme he was running in 2020. And then when Biden won, it was Biden is going to open, you know, with open arms, he's going to open the border. And I can't tell you how many times, uh, you know, I occasionally dip into right hate wearing hate radio just to hear what, you know, they're up to during the day and, uh, and drop by Fox news. And I can't tell you how many times I have heard just casual references to Joe Biden's open border policy. Well, A, Joe Biden never opened the border. In fact, the border is just as closed as it was, you know, a while ago. You do have people who are crossing the border illegally, but, you know, basically our borders are closed largely because of COVID. There's very little traffic, you know, outside of commercial traffic going, going, going across our border. Our Canadian border is sealed by the Canadians. And our southern border is sealed by us as a public health measure. So number one, there's not a new crisis. There has been a crisis building of people who qualify for refugee status in the United States who are fleeing you know, serious problems in their home states in Guatemala, Honduras, El Salvador, problems that were caused in large part by Ronald Reagan going in there in the 80s and disrupting so-called socialist governments. They wanted to give everybody health care and free education. It's not what you and I would call socialism, but, you know, I, I saw some bozo on, on TV yesterday was uh, interviewing Bernie Sanders. I think it might have been Jake Tapper. And he was like, you call yourself a socialist. You're a socialist. What do you think? About it? You know, and Bernie doesn't call himself a socialist. He calls himself a democratic socialist. But, but you know, anyhow, uh, even Bernie is not saying that the government should be making our cars or our blue jeans. You know, let's just have a decent social safety net. That you know, if you call that socialism, okay. But but they, you know, Reagan went down and basically took down three governments, and in El Salvador replaced it with uh, you know an, an overt death squad government and and damaged badly the governments in Honduras and Nicaragua. And now you've got climate change and making it harder and harder for subsistence farmers down there. And so we've got you know refugees on our border. Surprise, surprise. But there's also this problem, and I think it's even the bigger problem, is, is, is what the Republicans are up to. I mean, the main driver of immigrants and refugees, frankly, I believe right now, is the Republican Party itself. I mean, if you're living in poverty in Guatemala or in Mexico or in, in, in Honduras or El Salvador, and you're hearing on the media senior Republican officials who should know you know, Kevin McCarthy, the, the, the House Minority Leader, or Steve, uh, you know, David Duke without the baggage, Scalise, the number two Republican in the, in the U.S. House, uh, uh, you know, on camera in front of a microphone saying, yeah, boy, Joe Biden has opened the borders. He's got this open border policy. Or you hear, you know, Tucker Carlson or Sean Hannity or one of these other guys repeating it over and over that phrase. And you're one of those folks down there and you're thinking, boy, if I could get into the United States and get a good job, I could, you know, I could send money back home. I could lift my family out of poverty. I'm, I'm not even talking about refugees here. I would, you know, if it was you or me, 
I mean, I, I can't speak for you, but I can say for myself, if I was in that situation and I heard that that was happening, if, if somebody said, hey, Norway has opened their borders to people who don't speak Norwegian. If you have a Norwegian relative, you can come to Norway. And of course, you know, my father was 100% Norwegian. And my grandfather and grandmother were Norwegian immigrants into the United States. So I'd be there in a heartbeat if some Norwegian politician went on TV and said that. Wouldn't you? So you've got these Republicans telling people in South and Central America and Mexico, which I guess is part of Central America, or maybe it's North America, I'm not sure, but how, where, where one begins and the other ends. But in any case, you've got, you've got Republican politicians literally telling people that Joe Biden has opened the border. And then they act shocked, shocked, I tell you, and Fox News as well, when people start heading toward the border. They are trying to sabotage Joe Biden, and they're creating this giant uh, publicity event. I wrote about this today over at HartmanReport.com, and, and in that article, I've got all the links to when these various things happened and who said what and who did what. And, uh, yeah, I mean, you know, this is just a, this is an old scam. No Democrat is in favor of opening any borders if that means like, hey, we're going to become like the European Union and you can just live anywhere you want and you can work anywhere you want. Uh, no, nobody is suggesting that to the best of my knowledge. There may be one or two Democrats out there who have said things like that. They are outliers. But to the best of my knowledge, there are none. Because everybody understands you don't have a country if you don't have borders and if you don't enforce those borders. But the Republicans are telling these lies and it's, it's encouraging desperate, poor, ambitious people to come north. And, and, of course, you know, increasing the flow of refugees as well. I lived and worked in Germany for a year. I worked in Australia. In both cases, I had to get work permits to come to those countries. In both cases, it was my employers who did most of the work to get the work permits. Why? Because they didn't want to go to jail. Pretty much every other country enforces their borders, in quotes, Keep in mind, the biggest problem that we have with people who are in the United States illegally is not people who crossed the, the Rio Grande. It's people who came in as tourists and never left. And other countries deal with that by simply saying, if you hire somebody who's not a citizen, you go to jail. Not the, not the immigrant, you the employer. But back in 1986, when, when Reagan reformed our... our uh, uh, immigration policies. Well, this is from, from the Washington Post, a piece by Brad, Brad Plummer. Quote, the bill's sponsors ended up watering down the sanctions on employers to attract support from the business community. The end result was that they essentially gutted the employer sanctions. So starting in 86, we no longer were going after employers. So we created this whole huge infrastructure, ICE and all this other stuff, just to go after brown skinned people who are looking for a better life whether it's out of desperation or out of optimism. And as a result, well, look at meat pack, the meatpacking industry or the, the uh, construction industry, the ones that I, I mentioned in my, in my post today over at HartmanReport.com. Um, they used to be two of the most heavily unionized industries in the United States. I mean, it's hard work, right? But you could make 40 bucks an hour. You had a pension. You had a union. You could buy a car. You had health insurance. It was a ticket into the middle class. And then this legislation came along and Reagan stopped enforcing the law and suddenly both industries have lost all their unions or, or many of their unions. I realize there's still some good construction trade unions out there. But meatpacking, no, it's been wiped out. And you start at what, 10 bucks an hour instead of 40? The Republicans love this, right? Their big donors get cheap labor. They get to villainize brown people you know, with their racist stuff. We need comprehensive immigration reform and we need it now.